Still Please join me in a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'd all please stay standing for a minute. Uh, I'd like to offer a moment of silence for Marsha Hess, who was a 30-year employee at the police department, who unexpectedly passed away uh, over the weekend. So if we could have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's September 18th, 2017 meeting. We're going to open the meeting with uh, public hearing pursuit and to RSA 41, sorry, colon 14 slash A, preceding 4th Street uh, release portion of town owned dist restrictions number four on formerly leased land. First hearing, and we're opening it up at 7.01. And anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this? Yes. If you'd uh, come. If you want to hear from me, uh, sure. it's a public hearing. Just state your name and your address, please. Hi, my name is Charles Demas. We're at 4 7th Street, Hampton. And we're looking to get the uh, deed restrict, uh, a waiver on the deed restriction. Um, I understand the, uh, uh, we need the waiver because the existing setback rules are 20 feet uh, in our zone. Our current setback is 4 foot 7 inch like to replace the conc uh, brick and sandstone steps with uh, uh, the tech boards and also put an overhang over our front door. So we're, we'll need the uh, waiver in order to erect that. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wishing to be heard on this? Seeing no one, do you have anything? Oh, he stated quite succinctly, Mr. Chairman, uh, the request is the result of uh, a request of the selectmen. <clears throat> it's been heard by the planning board uh, who have issued a, uh, a response to you on September 8th, 2017 uh, in favor of the request uh, and it is to the proposed amendment to the deed would remove the portion of the deed restriction granting the grantee uh, will not erect any building upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line. It's already closer than that. This will provide for the addition of an overhang to the front door and replacement of existing brick stairs and iron rails. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no one else that wants to be heard, we're going to close that hearing at uh, 7.03, and we'll take that up again in two weeks. In two weeks, we'll have a second public hearing. Uh, and then at 7.03, I want to open up the second public hearing, RSA 41 colon 14 uh, dash A, proceedings, 20, 230 Exeter Road, donation of land to the town as shown on sheet A dash 1, and donation of drainage easement to the town for drainage pipe and outlet as shown on sheets A2 and C3, first hearing. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this public hearing? Seeing no one. Oops. I, Peter Ross. I apologize. Peter Ross, Ross Colony Court on 230 Exeter Road. I'll answer any questions anybody might have. Okay. Do you want to explain with uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a result of uh, another request um, which has been approved by the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. It is an easement for drainage to be accepted by the town and a donation of 12 acres at the rear of 230 Exeter Road to the town of Hampton. Uh, and it will be required under RSA 4114A, and that's what this hearing is about. Okay. Anybody else in the, anybody have any questions from the board? No? Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to close this one at 7.04, and we will be two weeks, have the second hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Okay, we'll now go to public comment period. Anybody from the public wishing to speak, please state your name and your address. Good evening, Mary Louise Woolsey, 148 Little River Road. Um, 
I've asked for a public appointment with you and was turned down, and I asked for a non-public and was turned down. So I'm uh, taking three minutes to uh, give you a brief recap. All of us who run for public office start as politicians working to get votes and get elected. Some elected officials then transition into the role of a public servant. There are serious concerns that need your attention, and uh, I would like to address my concerns to you in the form of a memorandum so that you can understand uh, my thoughts. And I'm going to ask uh, Selectman Barnes if she'd be kind enough to give this to the chair. And uh, I'm sure you can share it with your colleagues, uh, Mr. Chairman. And I will expect a response uh, and uh, an op opportunity at some point in the near future to uh, conduct a discussion with you. And uh, just so you are aware, I have given a copy of the memorandum to Max Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Okay, seeing none, we're going to go to the consent agenda. Announcements, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. We're going to go to uh, public uh, <laughs> announcements and community <laughs> calendar. I was taken by surprise a little bit. i got to tell you. Um, I have one thing, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to, uh, in case you already know, but I wanted to uh, say thank you to Max Sullivan for writing a great article about it. Mama Leone's had its final night this past Saturday after 42 years of uh, seasonal business down Hampton Beach, and I just wanted to say many people are going to miss it. And we had a uh, great night on Saturday. And Max, thanks again for the words. She will be missed. Thank you. Mr. Barrero? Yes, uh, last Wednesday, September 13th, Diana, Renee, and Brendan from the Recreations Department attended the New Hampshire Recreation Park Association Annual State Conference. They each won, uh, an award, all three won awards. Brendan won the High Five Award, and I'll quickly, uh, that is the eligible, part of the eligibility and criteria is dedication, integrity, advocacy, benevolence, and longevity. Um, so it's designed to recognize outstanding individuals in, in the recreation. That was Brendan. Uh, Renee won the New Hampshire Parks and Recreations Professional Development Grant Award, and that is uh, you have to applicant must be a member of the New Hampshire uh, Recreations uh, for a member of six months. Grant money must be used for professional development purposes only. They must prepare a summary for how that money is used, and upon completion, they must submit a short narrative. So he won that one. And Diana won the Wink Tappy Professional Award. Wink was a, uh, a long-time uh, uh, parks and recreation guy in, in, the, uh, in the state, and part of that eligibility and criteria is nominees should be cited for exceptional professionalism, must be credited with outstanding leadership as well as program and facility development. Uh, nominees should be exemplify professional characters, characteristics of high character and values. They must have a minimum of 10 years of experience in the recreation department and um, a couple other things. But I think that's pretty good when you go to one of these things and we have three people from that department go and they, they all three received awards. So I'd like to congratulate the rec department on that. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to chime in on that, that, you know, it just goes to prove what a, what a phenomenal recreational department we have and how committed they are, not only competent, but they, they go above competency and they're excellent in their job and they're excellent what they do for Hampton. Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. Yeah, I would like to uh, congratulate the Recreation Department also uh, because they do work with, uh, like we've all commented here many times, with all ages. We have a lot of things for senior citizens, for children and for young people and there's a lot that they do so we're we should be happy to have them and i'd also like to congratulate gus and linda um for their 
time at Mama Leone's. Um, and the newspaper did do a good job commenting on the different businesses. But one thing I take, you know, I accepted what was said in the newspaper that all of a sudden there's a movement for everything is going young and the old people are dying out. When in fact, in Hampton, we have the oldest population in the state of New Hampshire. The old people aren't dying out, they're flocking, they're buying condos, they're spending all the money. Their money is what's keeping Hampton going, older people. So there's room for everybody. But for them to today and say in the newspaper that it's young people taking over is completely wrong. We work with our master plan by law, which states this is a beach for family and children. And we've worked that way for years now. And we're going to continue to make everybody happy. Very good, Jim. One thing. I'd just like, like to say that uh, for those of you that know Dave Lavoy, Dave is a uh, longtime businessman at the beach. He was injured in a uh, pedestrian accident back in May. He just returned home this past weekend, and we wish him all the best. Very good. Very good. Okay, we'll now go to the consent agenda. 2018 BOS meeting schedule. Has everybody looked it over? Does anybody have any problems with it? Um, all of the uh, holidays uh, that uh, conflict with our joyous congregation here have been uh, precluded from being held. Is that correct? Yes. yes Wonderful. So I need a motion or are we, uh, we good to go? Motion to accept the calendar as presented. Mr. Mead made the motion, I think. Second. A second. All right. All in favor? Unanimous. Very good. All right. We have our first appointment, James Murphy, Environmental Protection Agency, and he's going to speak, A, about the Coakley Landfill. Would you please, you can sit at the uh, desk here, and uh, <clears throat> we welcome you. Thanks. Hi there, so I'm Jim Murphy from uh, the EPA uh, Region 1 office, which is in Boston. I am the, uh, the leader of our uh, government relations and community involvement um, team in the Regional Administrator's Office. Uh, Attorney Gerard asked that I uh, be here uh, this evening to uh, talk about the specifically the meeting that we were uh, had scheduled with the, uh, the Coakley Landfill Group uh, Executive Committee. Um, which I think probably everybody is familiar with. Probably six months ago, most people were not very familiar with Coakley Landfill Group. It's, uh, um, <clears throat> they seem to be very, very well known uh, at the moment. So it's a group uh, that is, uh, and the Superfund process and the Coakley Landfill Group has been on the national priorities list, which is a Superfund list for 25 years or thereabouts. I don't even know the, the exact number off, offhand, quite a while. Um, at the time, uh, when, a, when a site is listed on the Superfund site, we do a, uh, a search for responsible parties. Uh, the Superfund program essentially is that the, uh, the principle is that the polluters should pay if there are uh, responsible parties that we can still find. A number of the sites we have on the list are abandoned sites. We spend a lot of time trying to <coughs> track people who either uh, brought waste to the site, transported it, generated it, um, or owned it, um, used the site over the years. So uh, doing that with the Copley Landfill Group, we did identify uh, a number of parties who were still viable parties to this day. We had been meeting essentially for most of those 25 years on a regular basis. Uh, we have uh, a consent decree which is, uh, kind of outlines the, uh, the parameters of, of what would happen under the cleanup. It has been adjusted numerous times over the years. Um, and we have, we've had these meetings. I don't think we have been asked to have uh, a meeting with the landfill group as a public meeting before. Um, and I think that, well, I, I know the response that uh, uh, we gave Attorney Gerard was that, uh, that it's not a public meeting. Um, but on the other hand, uh, you know, we try to be transparent in all of the uh, proceedings that we have uh, out in local communities. Um, we typically 
uh, come out to talk to boards of selectmen, to community groups, to neighborhood groups, to individuals, try, uh, try to answer all their questions. This meeting is, um, again, it's a meeting with their executive group. I don't even know if they invite, um, you know, members to come to it. Uh, the we're not, we're, we don't force them to come to the meeting. Uh, when, when we request a meeting, they usually come to it. They wouldn't have to come to it if they chose not to. Uh, I don't think they would do that because we would eventually have to resolve that in a more legal way. We haven't had to do that. They essentially have been very cooperative, um, particularly the last couple of years uh, when uh, the, the whole PFC issue has um, has come to our attention as well as most of the communities in the, um, um, in the seacoast area. Um, so I don't know, uh, you know, what folks want me to talk about at the moment. I would rather maybe just, just take some questions uh, if people have concerns. Okay, we'll open up the questions. Let's start with Ms. Barnes. Well, I think our concern was that the EPA was going to get together and make all these decisions when we're the ones that actually have to deal with the consequences of whatever the Environmental Protection Agency right. makes. Now, you're saying this was sort of more of a technical session. Well, it is, it is a technical session, and typically we're going to go in there, you know, we have an agenda, which is <clears throat> things we're going to talk about are um, uh, sampling fish in the, air, in the, the water bodies around the landfill. Um, how to uh, potentially address uh, leachate, which is uh, contamination that is leaking from the landfill into the surface water bodies. Uh, there is the issue of, uh, of uh, PFCs at the uh, Aquarian wells. Uh, that's also something we were going to discuss. We were going to <coughs> discuss uh, moving ahead with uh, an investigation of the bedrock, which has not been, uh, we don't really have a good idea of how the contamination is moving once once it, it gets down deep into the bedrock. Uh, so those, and, and the last thing we would discuss is communication with the public because we are, we have had periodic public meetings. We're planning one for uh, probably mid-October to late October at this point, and we would be asking, you know, Coca Landfill Group to participate in that meeting. Um, so there's probably, decisions probably aren't going to be made. These topics will be discussed at the meeting. Then, you know, depending on what they have to say, what we have to say, you know, we'll, we'll then ask them or direct them, depending on what the issue is, uh, to take action following that meeting. We would report out to the public, you know, what, what transpires at the meeting. Um, so we're not, you know, uh, we're not going to come out of this meeting with, the, you know, a list of things that we've all agreed on that are going to impact people without hearing from people in the area. Okay. No, my only concern is that you do listen to the people that are in the area. You know, we have uh, we have water. We have, as you said, you know, aquariums already started to get problems going on. Right. And I think we should be involved in part of that too, where it's our, our citizens' water. <laughs> you know, um, you have many people that, have, that polluted that, including the U.S. government. Right. And uh, so we want to just make sure that our citizens are protected, and that's why we've we've asked to be part of this and make sure that we can be part of it. So. Right. Well, I think you know our our goal is is to protect the citizens, and I know, um, and you know that that the TPA's responsibility to um, you know protect human health. We have certain tools that we can use. Um, you know, the Superfund program is one of them. We also have a drinking water program. Um, that, along with DES, regulates the public water supplies. Um, and we're going to <laughs> be trying to set up a meeting with the Quarian in the near future also. Just to, we just need to gather more information. The way that we work, unfortunately, <clears throat> is we kind of, you know, we kind of have silos. In, the, in our office, we have a drinking water program. We have a Superfund program. We go ab about doing our business occasionally. Uh, you know, we run, we have common issues. This is one of the common issues, and we are, you know, trying to, to move ahead as quickly as we can. It's not as quick as people would like. Uh, you know, these are emergent contaminants that we're talking about. They are not, uh, we don't have the authority to order Coakley Landfill uh, Group to go and start sampling wells all over the place until, the, until contamination hits a certain level. Um, that's something that people really don't want to hear. Um, 
I'm also would think that people don't want to give EPA that type of authority to just go in and tell people that they should be forcing them to do stuff that's, that doesn't meet the criteria that's set up through Superfund. Superfund's evolved over 35 years. Um, EPA has a lot of authority, but there are a lot of things that we just can't move ahead. There are a lot of rules and regulations that we have to follow. I think people can understand that. It's frustrating at times for all of us, but we're trying to move ahead as best we can. And again, you know, the Coakley Landfill Group has been open to uh, a number of the suggestions that we've had to them, uh, we've made to them over the past months, uh, things that they have not had to do. Um, and we're, you know, we, well, I think one, one of the um, suggestions that I would have is that people here, you know, you, uh, they're, they're your neighbors. You know, a lot of these responsible parties at Superfund sites are, are multinational corporations. They might not even have headquarters in the United States. They're very difficult to talk to. These people are, are your neighbors. Um, you know, some of the towns in the area, I think, you know, approaching the Coakley Landfill Group is, um, you know, I'm not saying that that's going to solve any problems, but just to have communication at that level um, instead of just expecting that, you know, EPA is going to take care of it uh, and, you know, get the word out to everybody, which we, we will try to do, but we do have to work through our process. You know, it's not going to hurt to have, you know, local legislators, local elege uh, elected officials also um, talking with Coakley talking amongst yourselves, talking with the aquarium. I think a lot of that is happening and uh, and hopefully we're gonna we're gonna make progress. But again, you know, there's only so many we, we pretty much have to stay in our lane. Our bottom line is that we want to protect people um, from drinking contaminated water. Uh, but it needs to, you know, hit a certain level before we can kind of put the hammer down and, you know, um, us shut down a well or Russ order somebody to provide alternative water. That can be done, but it can't be done at the levels that we found it at uh, thus far. And there's been a lot of talk about, well, obviously, Coakley Landfill is the, the reason for all of this contamination in the area. That may well be, but we do not have the, uh, the proof for that right now. You know, we're, we're trying to, uh, to track it from the landfill. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons we want to meet with Aquarian to find out, uh, you know, from their technical people uh, exactly where the wells are, how deep they are, how often they're monitored, what type of, um, you know, century uh, wells they have in the area. So we have a, we have a lot of information still to gather. <coughs> and, uh, you know, I know we're, mo we're not moving as fast as people would like to see us move, but we're taking it very seriously. We're putting resources into it. And... Uh, you know, we hope to, uh, we just hope to make progress on it. Mr. Griffin? No. Mr. Bean? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Jim, for coming up. Jim, uh, you're a title, you're the team leader for government relations and community involvement. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Are you a scientist? I am not. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, a degree in sciences? I do not. Okay. So you are a public affairs guy? That's correct. Okay. Right. I'm going to give a little background, Mr. Chairman. I talked to you earlier and, and, and would inform you that I'd be doing so. Um, as a backdrop, uh, it was in today's paper, Jim, uh, in Bedford. Are you familiar with what's going on up there? Uh, not specifically. Okay. Because they're past that testing phase and they're, they're experiencing uh, challenges in their water system. <laughs> Bedford's a, a very wealthy community. They're drinking out of plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is in the paper today. More than 100 property owners were giving tax deductions or tax abatements, um, and the equated to about seven and a half million dollars in assessed value, which cost the town. And this isn't the important point: 166 thousand dollars in revenue. Uh, Bedford again, uh, an affluent community. They have these same issues. Um, and they're drinking out of water. The town is now uh, losing tax revenue. Um, perhaps uh, um, as, as you look at uh, highly paid executives in the EPA, uh, those types of revenue streams are disappearing. Uh, what, is your, what has your organization done in Bedford in terms of moving past what you think are discussion points uh, to uh, impose actions by responsible parties to mitigate what 
I just discussed it. Okay, I'm not familiar enough with it. Is that where the uh, okay, no, 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 Saint I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, so, I'm, 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 and this, this gets to the point of the issue. Okay, and this is strictly, strictly factual. There's nothing personal, sure. and, and we've sat before. Okay, you're not a scientist. We've got people down the road. Okay, uh, that are drinking out of plastic bottles. Okay, you're the EPA. We just heard you comment that uh, you're in discussion points that you don't have a good idea what's going on uh, and that uh, um, there's consent decrees out there. So um, I'm not panicking. I'm talking about facts. And uh, that's right up the road. The EPA uh, is like a lot of federal agencies, um, and I will tell you, and again, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I told you I'd talk about this as background, because this is fact as well. Uh, I'm on the uh, website for the Camp Lejeune Water Commission, okay, in the water study. And between 1957 and 1987, Marines and their dependents and children were drinking water that causes eight deadly diseases that have been recognized by the VA finally, okay? I, I don't think uh, the EPA was especially uh, uh, active in that. And when you read these eight cancers, they're scary. And they look painful and they're deadly. And children are getting them. And finally, in 2016, um, these men and women and their dependents finally get a little cooperation, okay, uh, from uh, federal agencies, okay? Well past the discussion point. So you see my point on that, don't you? Well, I, I, I know you do because it, it doesn't even need a response. And then I will say in further, uh, with service in a federal agency, with a top secret security clearance with the United States government, that all of my uh, records, confidential 126-page reports on me and my family and my history and my life, um, was, was swiped. And it's a big deal this week when Equifax does that for people's credit reports. And the data that was stolen uh, and then not told to us um, for months and months and months later is out there on the web my entire life. Uh, another federal agency that allowed that to happen, the Department of Defense. So I will tell you, and I would tell the board, and I would tell this town, that factually uh, I don't have any confidence that the federal government is going to protect us. Now, you specifically said there's some consent decrees that are out there. Mr. Jarrell, does the town of Hampton have a copy of the consent degree, the initial consent degree, and any amendments or alterations or additions or subsequent filings of that? We do. We do. Okay. I would motion right now that, that be, all of those be put on the town website. Second. Do you have any comment to make on that? No, I, uh, they're, uh, they're very lengthy, but uh, we'll see if the town yeah, website... I like to read lengthy things when we're talking about cancer and water. Yeah. All in favor? Good. Thank you. Now you're talking about uh, 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 you don't talk to other agencies, and that's the whole problem with this thing, Jim, is that this, this is a smokestacked response. You've got the United States Air Force, you've got the United States Navy, United States Department of Transportation, you've got municipalities that have polluted. All right. Now you're a government affairs guy. What has your government agency, the EPA, done this week, last week? What have you done to drive the exigency and the cogency and the urgency of need uh, with situations that are going on like in Bedford? And hopefully uh, it's not the case that this plume is coming towards the Hampton Wells. What have you done to reach out is the EPA? And I think you're wrong when you say we don't expect you to do something about it. That's why I think you get a paycheck from us. We do expect you to put the hammer down. What have you done this week, this month, this last year with those other agencies to drive them to the table to protect our water so we don't end up like Bedford? So. <clears throat> As far as dealing with the other agencies, I mean, that was done initially when, when the parties were gathered to, to sign this consent decree. We had discussions with all of those parties. They agreed together to, um, there, there's, a, there's actually a second, a second transporter, a, a smaller group of, of PRPs at, uh, at Coakley. <clears throat> they agreed amongst themselves to, uh, you know, essentially elect their leadership to agree, uh, you know, how much how much responsibility? How many you know? How many shares they would 
they each own essentially when whenever whenever there are, are costs that come up. So we don't t talk to them directly about that now. We talk with this executive committee, which was uh, the group that we were meeting with. We have, um, you were mentioned a number of Department of Defense entities. We've worked very closely with them at other sites. We have worked with them, excuse me, very closely at Pease over the years. Um, there are other sites where uh, Department of the Defense has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on groundwater issues. I know Camp Lejeune is, there's no excuse for what, what happened there for the, the length of time it took to, um, for DOD to essentially kind of own up to it and to get moving on it. Um, down at, at uh, Massachusetts Military Reservation in Cape Cod, since the uh, early 90s, they had been, they've spent um, extensive resources <coughs> just to address groundwater there. One of the problems, uh, uh, kind of a twist there, is they were looking for <clears throat> volatile common, uh, contaminants, kind of the typical things you would find at, at an airfield or a defense facility or a city, and they were not looking for PFCs at this time. There is a, a, an issue with PFCs down there, despite you know the Air Force spending hundreds of millions of dollars on groundwater uh, remediation systems because they were not targeting PFCs. And they actually managed to kind of concentrate, um, you know, they managed to contaminate some off-site areas with PFCs that, that had not been contaminated before because they didn't realize that it was doing what they were doing. Because the science, the science is still advancing. And as frustrating as that is to us, we don't have the answers. I know I talked about these silos that we don't talk enough to each other. We're trying to do that right now. We're doing it at, at EPA. We are going to talk to Aquarian. Um, and uh, you know, you've asked what we've done over the last month, the last year. We we are in contact with the Cochlear Landfill Group, close close to a, a weekly basis, if not more than once a week, on our technical level. Um, we're not talking to their executive committee all the time, but we're talking to their uh, Peter Britz, who was their kind of their um, spokesperson. Uh, we deal with him uh, a couple of times a week, generally. He deals back, you know, with the Cochlear Landfill Group. He he deals with their uh, technical consultants. So we're talking with them on a regular basis. We talk with DES multiple times a week about Cochlear as well as other sites that we're working on. Okay, and thank thank you for that answer. And I, I would say, uh, in this board, unanimously uh, sent a letter um, drafted by Town Esquire and the Town Manager uh, to uh, Mr. Sullivan, who is also the City Attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Coakley Landfill Group, and he's responded. And like other issues in town, once it goes to our attorney, um, I, I think it needs adult supervision. And uh, I think they see uh, uh, LG uh, is long past uh, the need for adult supervision. We have Aquarian in back here. There's a stock purchase plan going on with Eversource, two fine companies. Their water is suddenly getting polluted. And uh, they don't pollute. They take a natural resource out of the ground and, and uh, somebody out there, and perhaps, but you guys aren't doing enough work um, to test on this, move past the discussion uh, phase, is that uh, I, I have less confidence in them than I do in those other two federal agencies that I told you it took 30 years to protect Marines and sailors uh, from bad diseases that children and young military people are dying from. So uh, the Coakley Landfill Group, and talking to them, is uh, yesterday's news, and we're well past that, well past that. What have you uh, done, Jim, as the uh, government affairs, uh, charge the affairs, if you will, as the team leader in Boston, what have you been communications with our legislative delegation from New Hampshire in Washington, D.C., to include U.S. Senators uh, and U.S. Congresswomen uh, for their efforts in terms of fixing and shaping a final cost uh, for remediation and securing uh, a ring of steel around the Coca Landfill Group that uh, destroys any potential of these carcinogens coming into the water supply that these men um, have a company that uh, pumps it out of the ground for. What have, what have been your most recent discussions with them in further uh, addressing a cost? And have you urged, or at this point, some 30 years later after this has occurred, have you fixed any point uh, of a figure that some of these leaders 
in Washington could attach to a defense bill is an appropriation, some 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars uh, to provide money to secure us and secure a safe water supply. I'm interested in a specific answer on that. Right. Okay, so we, you know, as as a federal agency, we're prohibited from you know from lobbying. Members okay, let me just let me just stop you there because I've worked in the federal government. There are congressional liaison offices. The That's EPA right. has that. So let's not obfuscate. And, and let me just finish this, okay? Because I want to take this to a very serious discussion. Sure. Let's not play games, okay? Let's get down to brass tacks. We we know what we're talking about here, okay? I'm a federal agency guy. Mm -hmm. You are. Let's get back to answering the question and, and stop talking about lobbying. I'm not, to, not talking about lobbying. Oh, you that were. Was, you uh, just well, okay. did. Okay. Well, maybe it was the wrong word. It was. Representative. But um, we have congressional liaison offices. We respond to uh, to the U.S. Senator's offices uh, in New Hampshire multiple times a week, as well as the congressional offices on a wide range of, uh, of environmental issues. So we respond promptly. Uh, we try to get them answers for whatever they're uh, asking, whatever they're asking for. If they're asking us for what uh, they haven't asked us what we estimate you know some kind of remediation system at the Coakley landfill group would cost I don't think we would have an answer for them right now um, if they they've asked us about uh, public meetings they asked they called and asked if someone was going to attend this meeting tonight I mean we get calls from um, Senator Shaheen and Senator Harrison's office on regular basis emails and not just on Coakley on many other um, matters in New Hampshire so we try to respond to them as far as uh, state legislators we try to respond as best we can um, we have some restrictions as far as um, uh, you know testifying at state legislatures uh, hearings we can we have to get special permission to do this we, we have done that in some cases uh, so I don't know if that answers your question I'm not told, we, we we respond to our uh, to the legislators, and and, I, and I've met with them, and others in this room have, and I don't find that uh, uh, those staffers, and I have uh, specifically sat with uh, a congresswoman, uh, with state reps, with a state senator, with Representative Messmer, and they don't have a grasp on it. And this is 30 years later, and two of our uh, senators were governors in this state mm -hmm. that lived right down the road here. And what I'm specifically getting to the point at, Jim, is, and again, this is nothing personal, this is strictly business, sure. okay, and it's a serious issue, is uh, I'm interested in uh, those testing wells, okay, being uh, drilled immediately. I'm interested in the Coakley Landfill Group paying for it. I am interested in the federal government paying for it. Here comes uh, a representative also that was been at some of these meetings. I'm interested, in, and, and this is personally, and both as a rep, and as, a, as a, someone that drinks the water, after 30 years, is that your agency does something, okay? You say in your memo that there is a, a scientist that's gone to Puerto Rico, is that correct? I said that, well, our lead scientist <coughs> on this, um, on this site is from Puerto Rico. Yeah, he's, they're in Puerto uh, he's Rico. scheduled to probably go there. I got that. And you know what? We all feel for the people in Puerto Rico. But uh, uh, this is New Hampshire, and uh, Puerto Rico just last year declared bankruptcy. They stiffed people they owe money over. Well, I, okay, I, hear I, me out. Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. Okay. We pay our bills. We want sure. clean water, and we're expecting you. To, we're expecting you to task people with science. And we're we're expecting you to task people with the Coakley Landfill Group to do the drilling and solve the riddle of where these PFCs are coming from. That's what we want. So we're not ending up like Bedford, and you're not doing it. And, this, and the congressional delegation's not doing it. And the United States Air Force isn't doing it. And there's a simple solution. And it's above everyone's pay grade here. And it's for, for you people to use your liaison offices. That's what it's there for. And it's not lobbying. It's to pick up the phone and say they have taken the attenuation route which was the lowball effort 30 years ago, and now in an emerging science with carcinogens, we have a huge problem. And that's what I expect, and that's the end state. And that's what I, I'm sure the board feels about this. And, and that's, that's why we have an EPA. It's not for you guys to uh, um, you know, have discussions and, and think about stuff when, when the whole world's crumbling on it. It just isn't. You guys aren't earning your paycheck. You're just not. And you're not a scientist. 
And Mr. Chairman, I, I would uh, defer, uh, Mindy Messner has called today. She is a hydrologist. She has legislation. She is on uh, governor appointed and, and uh, legislative body appointed commissions. And I would uh, ask that she be allowed to ask Jim questions pertinent to Hampton's interest in this issue. Could I just respond first? Yeah. Okay. So the uh, uh, Gerardo Milan uh, Ramos, who is our, our scientist on this, may be going to Puerto Rico. If he goes to uh, on the hurricane response down there, um, the work on Coakley is not stopping. Uh, however, if I said that uh, in an email or a memo, it was just to let people know he's not available for a, a public meeting for a while. The, the work is not going to stop. We have other people other scientists who are, who are at work on the Coakley uh, project, it's not going to stop. Thank you, Arado is not available for a meeting. Thank you. Um, and I, I was going to respond to something else, but I, I forget what it is, so <laughs> I'd be happy to uh, take other questions. Now, what was your request? Representative Messner, who was spearheading uh, this, this issue on myriad fronts, both in uh, govern, government and governor-appointed commissions, uh, has questions uh, that uh, directly impact and are specifically directed in the interest of Hampton water drinkers. And I would like her to be able to ask Jim questions. Okay. Does the board have any objections to that? No. Does anybody on the board have any other questions that they want to ask at this point? No. Okay, you can go to the uh, podium, please. So, um, introduce yourself. I'm so we Representative know you Mindy Mesmer from Rye, Newcastle, and I've been uh, heading up the Coakley Landfill Subcommittee for the Governor's Task Force for the last year and a half or so, and been actively involved in this situation um, for the last year and a half. Um, investigating the possible causes of cancer cases in the five-town area. Uh, the first issue that came up was Coakley Landfills for our task force, and so I've been involved very actively in, as a hydrogeologist looking at this issue. And uh, so for the last year and a half, I've been asking a lot of questions about this, and um, for the last year and a half, at many times, EPA has sort of mischaracterized some of the comments I've made by asking by saying that I was mischaracterizing the flow from the site. And this was very important because, as this 1994 document says, groundwater flow is radial. And every time I said radial, Gerardo countered me. And I just brought this to the attention. I found this in a 1994 document. This is important because if it's flowing radially, it's flowing to the south and towards Hampton, as well as to the north and the east and the west, like we had, we had talked about. So. You know, it's been a, a process of trying to get people on the same page with the hydrogeo that doesn't change since 1994. So, um, and my concern has been that PFCs would migrate, and now I believe we're seeing them. As I said, the, today I sent an email to the EPA and DES talking about the recent results that were taken in May of wells um, by Aquarian and how they compare with the res results um, in May that were collected at the landfill. And my concern is there is a migration component to the south. There is a preferential flow path that's been partially identified, um, partially sampled, 500 or 600 parts per trillion on the, the landfill. And we're seeing the same cadre of uh, PFCs showing up now in the wells in, in Hampton, that serve Hampton from Aquarian. So that's my concern. I pointed that out this morning. So um, I would also talk about um, the fact that I don't, I, the, the fact that they're emerging contaminants has really is passed now. That the people who talk about emerging contaminants have taken them off the list. We already know enough to know that they're fairly, uh, they do cause some cancers. So I, pe most people don't even call them emerging anymore. So my question to you is how, I know you've said that because they're not a circle hazardous waste, that you don't have any tools in your toolbox. I'd like to know uh, the comment you just made about the drinking water aspects. What tool do you have in that program? And also would ask you about what RECRA or circular authority you might have to uh, address these issues. Uh, those are questions I can't answer. So we might get them from? It, well, you can submit them, you know, uh, the appropriate people at EPA okay. uh, would, could okay. respond to. So, uh, 
Also, about a year ago, I submitted a comment response letter to the, to the EPA about the five-year report talking about how, because we have PFCs, the selected remedy for the site is no longer applicable. And I was going to get a response to that by the end of September of to this year, and I haven't seen it. So I'd like to see when that might be coming, because that talks to whether or not the remedial measure implemented is appropriate or not. Obviously, I don't think it is, because now we're seeing migration of these very persistent chemicals to the south. So, right, and I think we we agree that the uh, that the remedy as it exists is is not adequate at the okay. moment. Okay, so the EPA is saying that now. <laughs> well, but we but what's what's to be done about it is not as you may have a better idea. We don't really we don't feel we have enough information to really design a system, and I think you would agree with that that we could use a lot more information. Actually, no, because the 1994 MOM for this site had four alternatives, and as representative, may I interrupt, Mr. Chairman? And you're big on acronyms. You said oh, MOM. Uh, migration management of migration was part of the record of decision. There's several documents that form the record of decision. So management of my migration was a study of uh, alternatives that, and you referenced one of them that um, they picked MM2. It's called management migration two, which was one of the cheaper approaches, which in included. A cap, and then on OU1, which is the landfill itself, and then um, uh, just watching to see what happened to the chemicals. So, so if I can say, so the the contamination that that was designed to address. Right. That exactly. So that, and that's my point is that in this last five-year re review, that's not appropriate anymore because right. we know that that is not working. So I would say brush off the 1994 MOM. I just have been looking at it for the last five days, actually, in very a lot of detail. Take MM4, which is the active remedial measure to control migration off the site. There's already detailed cost estimates in there. There is uh, a cost estimate which included at the time only VOC and metals um, treatment. Take those blocks out. Stick in the GAC. We know how much GACs cost. Uh, Portsmouth has very successfully implemented a pilot program there. Slide that in as a cost estimate, and it only increases the budget about $380,000 over the 3.2 million that was in the MOM, and it should be good to go. The, the hydro doesn't change <laughs> since 1994, so I don't, I don't really think that that's a big issue. Well, and, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to disagree, but what I've been told by our scientists is we don't really have enough information to... I don't know if, if this system addressed uh, groundwater that was migrating radi radially or if it was just in for one, well, one direction. Can I just interrupt for a second? Sure. What I'd like to do is keep this on. I mean, I'm, I'm not letting the EPA off the off the uh, hook at all. But Jim was here for a specific reason, and if he's not a scientist, if we're peppering him with questions that he's unable and unqualified right. to answer, I don't think right. that that's right. right. I think that if you know, if we want him from a public, a government thing to bring it to the EPA, that's different. But I don't think we should be firing questions at him that he's unqualified to answer. I don't think that that's correct. Well, I think, wait a minute, uh, let me finish, please. All right? I think he came here specifically to talk about the, the fact that why the meeting wasn't public. And I think that's an issue that we're dealing with. So, I mean, I agree 100% with what the questions are. But if he's unqualified to answer the questions, we're going to sit here and, and just keep getting I'm not qualified. I, I, would, I would offer this is that uh, these questions go on the record that we're driving uh, the end state, uh, which is not satisfactory at this point, and that Representative Messner and Representative Edgar is here, if he would like to come up to the table, ask pointed questions for a detailed response from a government agency that we pay for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, would that be more of a, of a state issue? Right now, I know it's a Coakley landfill that we're talking about, but would that be more of a, from a representative's point of view than from a selectman's point of view? I'm just trying to keep this meeting on task. Go ahead. I just have a question for you. Sure. You keep saying you don't have enough information. Well, I guess what we want to know is what is happening to get you the information that you need. Because right now, we have a private company that's going crazy testing everything for us. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, just, I guess I don't understand why they can do that for their municipalities that they serve. But why the EPA is not doing it for the region that is in peril of this dangerous water, if you're eventually becoming dangerous water. Right. That's, that's my question. What, what are you doing to get the information you need? Well, we, we've asked the Cochlear Landfill Group to install some additional wells at the site, which they're in the process of doing. Um, 
again, it's not, you know, it's not, you just, you don't just drill a well and, and you know, pump some water out and, that, and that's it. There's just a lot of parameters and steps. And I think Mindy could probably talk about those a lot more. You know, maybe it's not happening quickly enough. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it, it, it is. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's not that simple. We're going to be asking Coakley to do more. They, again, have proceeded on most of the things we've asked them to do. So, um, you know, as far as what Aquarian's doing with their wells as a private water supply company, that's, you know, it, it's a different regulatory um, scheme there. Um, I'm not familiar with what they're required to do uh, by DES or even our, our uh, uh, drinking water program. They're actually going beyond what they're required to do for the right. sake well, of so the people that are drinking that water. At the moment, so. All right, thank you. Mike, do you have something to add? Well, uh, I haven't been involved in this to this point as much as a lot of other people, and, uh, including uh, Mindy and, and Rennie. And now Regina's getting involved uh, with the, uh, the committee, and I've been put on as an alternate. We'll see if the state accepts that. But from the perspective I've been seeing, it does appear that uh, I'll use the analogy of Stalingrad. It, it appears that we're not getting the answers, and it, it almost it seems to be one obstruction or reluctance to continue something or give, give you a timeline on what's going to happen time after time after time, and it just keeps on stretching out. So I, I think that would help a lot if we get more commitments of things, a timetable of when certain things were going to happen, you know, as far as investigations, and not feel like when you ask somebody something, you're getting half an answer. Not, not for me right now, but I've been at some of the other meetings, that, or denials of the, the, of what maybe some of the science is, or, or what some of the results are, because you, you can test the heck out of this, and, and I'm, I'm unfortunately one of the ones that does do like to do an awful lot of testing, and I like to have the most information possible to make a decision, but uh, it just seems, uh, from my perspective of seeing it, is that it, it's just not a real thrust to take care of this problem. It's a very serious problem for us. And if it continues to happen, it's going to be a lot more serious. And it's going to affect the state quite a bit, too, because the beach is, is right down there. Mm -hmm. and they don't get their water from the ocean for drinking. So um, that's, that's all I have to say. Thank yeah. you. And I guess just some of the comments I was getting at is that these are things I've been talking about for a while. And to have, you know, and I am frustrated because I feel like this has there have been some basic technical things that have continually been questioned, and those have impeded the progress uh, at looking at this happening to the south and to the east and to the west. There's still an issue to the east with rye, and now we have an issue in rye with our water. So, you know, these are issues that are very important. There's still no wells to the east to look at whether or not flow is, to migra is migrating to rye. Um, and so, you know, I just am frustrated with the fact that there's been a continual uh, effort to rewrite or, or maybe not understand the technical issues that are the basic issues that deal with, that affect what is happening now, what we're seeing now. So I'm concerned because I've been talking about this for a while and, you know, now we're saying we don't have enough information. You know, they still, CLG has not sampled some of the wells between here and uh, the landfill. They were asked to by EPA and they didn't do it and they still haven't done it. So, you know, I, I don't, I'm frustrated that as Mike said, this has sort of, you know, lengthened this process, stretched it out, and we still don't seem to have the answers or a timetable for it. I, I agree it's frustrating. I mean, they've sampled some wells, DES has sampled wells, the sampling is going to continue. It's not, it, it doesn't happen overnight, I, I agree. Um, so what my, other... My question is, is this stuff that, that Jim can answer, or is this stuff that needs to go to somebody else? Well, I, I, I kind of want the board to understand a little bit too where the frustration lies and I support I, I think we totally su be. understand okay. where the, where okay. the frustration lies and I, and I think we're totally in favor yeah. of finding solutions to it and I think we're totally in favor of getting to the correct people to do that and I think we're totally in favor of that the meetings should all be public I think that's I mean maybe not public comment and stuff but the public should be allowed we're totally in favor of that but what I'm saying is from the point of view are we questioning somebody who does not have the answers? We have to right. question the right people, right. and that's my question. So I would say I think we all know where we're going, and I think... Yeah, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, and, and you raised a good point, and perhaps in summation, and Jim, thanks for coming up and sitting in the hot seat here uh, in, in Hampton. Really, I really do appreciate it, and I know the board does. Uh, 
Is there a commitment, as you as the team leader of government relations, that uh, these meetings that you will hold with the Coakley Landfill Group are open to Eversource, are open to Seacoast communities, are open to Aquarian, are open to our town attorney? that there is no violation of federal law, there is no violation of state law with closed meetings, especially when this, this board has unanimously expressed concern about uh, the threat and uh, conflicts of interest. Would you give us that pledge now that, that uh, us and our designated representatives can attend these meetings in here and have access to data? Right. Unfortunately, I can't say that. <clears throat> Um, and, and why not? Well, our, our opinion is that it's not a, a violation of, of federal law. That I know, but it's a matter of common decency okay. and public safety, and you are a government employee that is paid by citizens of the United States of America. What is your basis for not, it's, it's a matter of common decency and uh, good government that you wouldn't want this open. So these situations like are occurring right now in Bedford don't happen here. Well, I'm just not aware of this happening. You know, we have meetings with, with GE, with a lot of large companies. If we, were, if they were going to be public meetings, they, they wouldn't come to the meeting. You know, or they would come and they wouldn't say anything. The meetings would not be productive. I don't know how, how to say it other than that. Um, we will, we're willing to. So we could ask Coakley Landfill Group if they would participate in a public meeting with all the local elected officials and uh, the general public, and maybe they would. These meetings that we've had from them, have that's not been the case in the past. We're just trying to get this one done so we can get agreements, so we can move ahead and do all the stuff that everyone wants us to do, that we want to do, that Coakley Landfill Group needs to do it. And to have a big public meeting is, is really not the way to make it happen. It's not that we're trying to hide anything. We will um, discuss whatever we discuss with them. Um, I mean, just I think anybody in this room would understand if you're trying to you know, some meetings are better done not in the public, not that we're trying to hide anything. Again, we're willing to come to uh, Hampton at any time and do a public meeting uh, to go where the one we're planning now is going to be in Greenland again, which is right near Coakley. Um, but if you would like other, some other people to come from EPA to a future, uh, future Board of Selectmen meeting, we can certainly arrange that. We're not trying to hide anything, um, but as far as just having a public meeting, I'm not giving the legal answer. I know our legal folks are saying that we can't be required to do that. Um, I just think it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to get have a, a productive meeting where we have a list of things we want we want to get agreement with on them with them to have them take action. Well, I would say this, is that uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. You have had closed meetings, you have had secrecy, and the situation's getting worse. And uh, were it not for you coming up here again and sitting in the hot seat, were it not for the town of Hampton uh, challenging uh, this phenomena, uh, perhaps uh, we would be fast-tracking towards a Bedford phenomena. And, and I would say that we would, we would urge you uh, to have these meetings open and, and for us simply to have access to data and to be, you to be more rigorous and I think that, that that's a no-brainer that you and everybody that works for the citizens of the United States of America you're not beholden to corporations okay? you're beholden to citizenry right. these corporations have no special privilege uh, that ranks uh, uh, supremely above citizenship and safe drinking water and I would, I would urge you to uh, change that mantra. And, and uh, maybe they need to say less. Maybe citizens need to say more. And maybe you need to tell these corporations exactly what to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, well, Thank one you. other note is uh, uh, the data is public. Um, you know, all the data that is, uh, that comes to EPA from the Coca Landfill Group is, is available. You know, we try to not make, it, when it's uh, uh, private wells, we try to you know, black some of that, with, withhold some of the names, but all of the data is available. Okay. I want to thank you for coming in tonight. Could I, uh, sure. yeah. Yeah. So have the town attorney ask something and then? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you being here also. Um, the, uh, during the past week, I have made at the board's authorization uh, demands to the EPA that this meeting that EPA was going to conduct in Chelmsford this Thursday be made open to the public. and. Uh, what EPA has responded is that the federal sunshine law does not uh, cover this particular agency as it is an agency headed by a single person rather than a collegial body. And uh, although that appears to be the case, 
uh, I think Mr. Bean's admonition is, is important that what really is at bottom here is the public interest. I did want to report, though, that Coakley Landfill Group itself conducted a public meeting in Northampton on August 15th uh, regarding how it does business. It is interested in having the public understand what it is and what it does. Uh, we've also corresponded, as uh, Selectman Bean mentioned, with uh, Attorney Sullivan in Portsmouth. He has uh, indicated that if this board invites him to come to a meeting, he will come to this board, address the board in public at a, at a very future meeting uh, with uh, uh, the gentleman who is their project manager mm -hmm. and with their groundwater hydrogeologist uh, from Lewiston, Maine. And so uh, he would like this, this board and the public to understand more about the Coakley Landfill Group as well. So I believe it is possible, even though the law does not require that EPA be subject to the Sunshine Act, that this could be conducted in public. And I think you've seen just a sample of the important items that can be brought to the, to the agency for the benefit of the agency. The towns of Hampton and Northampton have engaged a respected groundwater hydrologist also who has worked with EPA in the state before who would participate on a technical level if allowed. Um, I just think it behooves the agency to allow that kind of participation as well to inform you rather than waiting until maybe the, the Copley Landfill Group gives you the information they want to or don't. You have the ability to force it, and you have others with resources who are willing to help rather than see it get to the point of a benefit. And so uh, I would urge the agency to reconsider to allow technical people, if you're not willing to allow all of us who are sitting here to be at such a meeting, but at least allow technical people who can help give you information uh, and another perspective to be in attendance. Okay. And I, I think those are uh, good suggestions of getting additional resources. I just think that this upcoming meeting is not, the, you know, it's, it's one of the things that's on the agenda so we can talk about moving forward in a more public way. So I, I have no, um, you know, I don't know what's going to come out of that discussion, but it sounds like there could be something positive. And one thing just to note is the meeting is not going, it's not, not going to happen on Thursday because uh, it's Rosh Hashanah and that was public affairs person mistake for letting that be uh, <clears throat> be scheduled. I've done that before in, the, in my twenty something years, but uh, so we're still we're going to come up with another date. It could be the next date. It could be uh, the second week in October at this point. So. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. All right. Old business. No, I know. Town managers. <laughs> Town managers report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, please report that the Commissioner of the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources has responded to the selectman's request of June 6th. I believe you've all received a copy of the letter yes. so that you've had an opportunity to review it. A reminder of the State Department of Transportation, our Executive Counselor, and the Regional Planning Commission will be holding a public hearing on the state's 10 year plan for transportation needs on Monday. October 16th at 7 p.m. at the Hampton Beach Seashell Complex. Drakeside Road is scheduled for milling and repayment, uh, repayment applications starting on September 20th, just around the corner, weather permitting. And it doesn't sound like the weather is going to be too good for the next few days, but that's one of the things that they're planning on trying to do. Uh, and I'll ask again, please, because we've been seeing traffic again, please avoid Academy Avenue during school hours as buses are discharging students on the street, causing long traffic delays. I can, Mr. Chairman, tell you that uh, starting technically on September 20th, subject to weather, uh, that there will be a detour on Hot Odds Way, and traffic, truck and otherwise, will be going down Tide Mill Road. Tide, Hot Odds Way is in the process of failure. We're going to um, need one to two weeks with good weather to uh, tear up the road and repave it and fix, fix it so it doesn't fall apart completely. And uh, that's going to technically start on the 20th. I sus suspect, sir, that uh, it's going to take a little longer than that before it starts because of the weather we're having. And I also have a schedule here, handwritten, that was given to me. In addition to hot odds, uh, they're going to be starting work on the 21st on Drakeside Road. 
Uh, they'll be reclaiming the road. They've got several thousand square feet uh, in which they need to reclaim. Um, they're also going to start on the 25th. They're going to start Woodland uh, and uh, some of the other roads that uh, need repair that are on this year's list. And at your next meeting on the 28th, I will be going through the entire list for that week, but Hardards and, and Dregside and Woodland are all in the, the work schedule for this coming week. That's in addition to um, the work on Lafayette Road, which is scheduled to, uh, to begin very shortly, and it's going to go run from 10, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., uh, but again, that's weather depending, and we are having a storm coming in the next two days, so I suspect nothing's going to happen there until the end of the week. Did you say our next meeting on the 28th? I think it's the 28th. 25th. 25th, okay. 25th. 25th. Okay, questions for the town manager? Regina. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Nope. Mr. Griffin. Thank you for your report. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bean. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch, have you had a chance to uh, review uh, the city attorney uh, for the town of Portsmouth, uh, Attorney Sullivan, who was also um, a key member of the Cocoa Landfill Group? Have you reviewed his 15th September letter? I did letter? have an opportunity the other day to read his letter, yes. Okay. Uh, comments, please? Uh, I suggest seriously that this board invite him to be here to talk uh, and to expand on his letter. Um, the original letter from the Board of Selectmen uh, that they had requested us to write uh, dealt with a potential conflict of interest. He has said he does not have one. Uh, I think he can come and explain that to you in person. I think that's a good thing for him to do. It's also a good thing to get it out in public so that we know exactly what his thoughts are and exactly where they're going with the, the City of Portsmouth is going. Um, in their relationship with Coakley and the relationship in getting Coakley corrected. Specifically, when, when he declares there is no conflict of interest, uh, he, he says on page one, is my role in the committee to advance the interests of the city of Portsmouth in performing the work of the Coakley Landfill Group? That's what he said. Um, comments, please. Well, that supposedly is his, is his goal. <laughs> and he says so in writing, so, you know, I don't know to the contrary. However, uh, I think you should have him come in and explain it and thoroughly explain it. So there's no question about the fact that he is or is not in a conflict of interest. Uh, yeah, Attorney Sullivan can say whatever he wants uh, or opine however he wants to be. It's, uh, sure. it's, it's as clear as the nose on my face. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, if, if the, uh, the board and, and you would agree, I'd be interested in not just perhaps meeting with the Board of Selectmen, but perhaps uh, uh, extending it to a, a public hearing. We could have Representative Edgar, Representative Mesmer. We could have our uh, Dr. Bellicero. We could have town yep. attorney. And I, I, I don't think this is the appropriate venue. I think it rises to the level of a, uh, a hearing uh, and not to be scheduled on a, um, uh, a selectman's meeting. I don't, I don't think that is the, uh, the, the venue for it. Uh, if it requires a motion, I would make one, but I leave it to you and the town manager and the town attorney. And I think sooner than later would be better. I think probably we need to hold it here so we can get it on camera. Yes. So everybody can hear it. Oh, yes. This was his intention as right. well. Right. Yeah. To, to have a public hearing, not a selectman's meeting. Yes, sir. I, well, so it makes things simple because it's just one item. I'll second that motion. You got a motion? Did you, did you make a motion? Yes, yes, yes sir. He did. Motion, seconded, in favor. All right, so it'll be a public hearing. Can you schedule that? Or yes, sir. Can you Very well. somebody take care of that? Yep. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No. I have a question. Sir. Uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but if Jose were to come, we have plans, PDW has plans, just so that everybody knows and can feel confident that if we were to hit, get hit with a major storm, we have plans to deal with it. We have emergency we do. plans. There are emergency plans. Uh, the, uh, the state and the town have worked together on those plans. Uh, we do expect to see sea rise, and we'll be putting out a warning notice probably tomorrow uh, because we're going to have at least four high tides during this period of time. Uh, they're talking about heavy sea rise and, and, and heavy, heavy uh, rip currents and, and heavy wave action. So, uh, and it is coming in from the east, so it's going to come in through the opening of Hampton Harbor. It's going to drive more water in. 
We need to be prepared for that, and we'll be putting out a notice probably tomorrow morning advising people to, in low-lying areas, to prepare to either evacuate or to uh, move their vehicles to some other place where they're safe and to move themselves to some other place where it's safe. Now, how do those warnings go out? Through email and telephone. Email and telephone. Right. And do people have to be have requested that emergency telephone? Yes, that's correct. Right. And how do they request that emergency? They call the Department of Public Works and ask to get on the emergency telephone list for, for flooding. Okay. And that is on our website? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. So anybody that's, that's interested can go to the website, find the number for DPW, call DPW, and put on the emergency the emergency list for emergency telephone list. call or email call. And you get an, an automated telephone call on what emergencies are coming up. And I would, I would advise everybody to do that. Oh, yes. It's very important. Right. And the other thing on your report that I would advise everybody is Academy Avenue. Oh, yes. School hours. I went by there yesterday, and the principal is out there trying to direct traffic away from the Academy, people trying to turn down Academy Avenue. Yeah. I mean, it's a very easy concept they're building the schools stay out of the uh stay off the road right now there are many other ways you can go thank you anybody else any why don't they just close it to local traffic the people that live there we can do that if i would like me to do that i can do that well, you, you, you specifically voted not to do that I, I, myself i would think particularly during school hours yes i agree it should be that way that's when all the problems are occurring yeah, we'd be happy to close that just above the library so the library would not be affected and at the top of the street so the school would not be affected. And if the board agrees with that, we'll have it closed. Should we check with the school first to we see if they want us to do that? See yeah. if they want us to do that? I mean, we could take a vote to say that we're in favor of it, and if the school were to, to request it, we'd do it? The only thing I can see that's going to be a problem is parents bringing their students to school because there is a drop-off spot on Academy Avenue for vehicles to pull off with students in it to drop the students off. Okay. Why, why don't we have, why don't we check with the school first? And the police chief. The police chief. Chief, chief place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Super. Old business. Regina? I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Rick? Phil? Negative, sir. Mr. Yes, yeah, we have, uh, we had the we, we got our response from well it used to be dread now it's whatever it's called yeah. uh, to your letter yes so does that uh, we had a motion last week to follow that further if we didn't that's correct do you want me to follow up further because we did get a response we have had a response now you know I think now is our time that we have the response from them a few of us here have been in the House representatives a few of us in the past. You know, um, it, it's time that the House, our representatives here started, you know, the dread can only go so far. Yeah. They can only do what the House representatives tells them to do. And I think this is this is above them. I really do. I think yeah. the, the, what we're talking about, and I'm, don't get me wrong, I am totally for us pursuing the state, but it's not anymore a dread problem. It's not a... Uh, it's a legislative problem. It's a legislative problem. I, 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 dis I disagree wholeheartedly. Well, and I'll, 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 when you yield the floor, I'll no, go on. No, that's fine. I just think that uh, we can we can push our legislatures towards it. We can we can uh, request them. We can get our senator in here, and I think maybe now is the time that we did that. But I think uh, you know they they've given us an answer. They can't do it. They're 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 following their legislative rules. And I think that now, now it's time that we, we get our legislators involved in it, and it's going to be a tough uphill battle up there. And I think, but I think that's where it is. I think we, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they got back to us with their, with their their response, and I think now we need to go after our legislators and go after the the state in general. We don't need to be handpicking departments. That's something that's out of their control, anyways. May, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me do this. Let me go to you last. Regina? I want to say something about that. I agree. Our, re our representatives are supposed to be our voice, I agree with. But this has gone on and on and on. And, I mean, we just keep giving them, you know, benefiting the state as a whole. Like I said in a letter that I wrote, which I'm planning on revising and sending out another version of it, 
to all our state legislators, all our U.S. senators, all our state senators, and but what's going to, who's going to be held accountable? Because the legislators seem like they, you know, we get the commissioners to deal with because they're appointed. All right. So on one hand, I agree with Rusty. I think that it should be more of the elected officials taking over and proving what Hampton does for the state, what it contributes to the state. And the response we got back from the whatever that department is called now, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, was a little bit disappointing. And I see and I do see how it might be out of that department's hands. But that doesn't mean that I think that we should completely give up on what we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do is prove what this town does annually for the state of New Hampshire as a whole. So. Mr. Griffin? Yeah, I feel that one of the problems here, it could affect the, it could be, a, be, be affect the town also. I mean, we're talking about something that was done in 1933, and yet uh, that is what 67, you know, 85 years ago, 84 years ago, and yet. The people that live on the east side of Ocean Boulevard, just tonight, I, when I came, returned to Hampton from being in Boston for the day, I came down and I just looked at the sidewalks. They're unbelievable. The sidewalks that if you want to look at them near, um, uh, from that Stacy Jane's to where the beach starts, they're completely... Uh, just flattened. There's no curbs or anything. Over and over again, all these new condos and that that have gone in there, nobody can get an answer either from the state or from the town. And um, yet we continuously have to, um, you know, pay our taxes. And if you go down to at the corner of Winnicunit Road where the Ocean Club is there, I was looking at there. It's, again, it's completely flush. There are no curbs. Uh, they talk about in, in in the letter that Jeffrey Rose wrote about you know maintaining the highway. Well, the highway, the sidewalks, those are key things that should be. We're just getting pushed back and forth, back and forth. Nobody gets any answers. Nobody at the planning board knows what to do. Nobody at the uh, uh, zoning board of appeals really knows what to do. And I've sat on all these boards, and I've watched it over and over again. There needs to be an answer. Whether it is something that we're happy to hear, uh, it needs to be defined, because we need to know who is going to do what needs to be done on the east side of the street. Uh, a lot of money was spent on the other side of the street. Now he's saying, well, we've, we've, we're paying for the trash, and we're doing this, and we're doing that. Yeah because there have, they have tried to uh, give a little, take a little, give a little, take a little, but this needs to be clear and cut and dry. Who is responsible for the east side of the street? It's ridiculous. And the east side of the street, everybody, you know, I don't want to make, uh, speak poorly of people that own those buildings on the east side of the street, but many, the state, I've seen them refer to that they think that nothing's being done by the owners of those buildings. Nothing's being done because no one knows who, who's in charge of what and what, who, where do you get the permission? You cannot get the permission from the state to do anything, but, and then you cannot get permission from the town to do anything. So these things have to be decided. We just can't sit here and say, okay, we're all you know, 1933, that was the big depression, and we're still being depressed by everything that happened in 1933. I think it's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there was a vote at our last meeting. Uh, it was five to one to execute. Uh, I have served in other townships. Four to one. Four to one. Uh, and uh, I, w I would hope we're not in the position because a bureaucrat uh, in Concord uh, 
uh, corresponds with us two days after we make a motion to pursue legal action and sends out a letter. Uh, and uh, there are other frost calls to the uh, Concord to inform uh, certain uh, elected officials that it was coming. So nobody was blindsided on this. Uh, I would hope that this board, when they uh, are votes of four to one, uh, three to one, three to two, whatever they are, that the following week we don't start coming back in here and having change of heart. Uh, and start rescinding motions that carry. Uh, and I would say, especially when uh, our staff, led by Mr. Welch, led by Mr. Gerald, under the chairman's leadership, with the finest uh, finance director in the state, with our department heads, and we're talking $700,000. $700,000. If we're going to offer supplications and become syncophants, and yield on bended knee in front of our citizens and our taxpayers to bureaucrats in Concord over $700,000. Uh, and if we are going to uh, ascribe to the notion that what has never been done before in Concord uh, is to uh, advance Hampton's interest. And I know personally, with the legislation that I've put forth up there that didn't make it out of committee, I know the people in this very town that are former legislators that have attacked me for absurd ideas. Uh, if they are happy to let those $700,000 of taxpayer money go through, then so be it. But if that is the will of the board is to reverse uh, decisions that have been made and that have been brought on through five and a half years of, of real hard work and intelligent work and accounting and finance and depreciation, then don't expect anybody to ask for one cent more as we go forward in this budget. Don't ask for a pay raise. Don't ask for any capital expenditures. Don't ask for any pay raises for people, union negotiations. Ask for nothing, because if we're going to not fight for $700,000, then this budget's going to be flat, and it'll be flat in my watch. And I would say this, again, when we sit here, and all of us have our issues that we, we spend dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of hours on, uh, if we're going to start um, rolling back these votes and re-adjudicating and going back against data for $0.7 million, and may I remind you, Mr. Chairman, that the state of New Hampshire, with its revenue camp in this very town, 03842, with tolls, liquor stores, insurance premium tax, real estate transfer tax, rooms and meals tax, court fines, the meters at the beach, it's a $200 million haul. $200 million haul. And finally, if you think there's a chance of advocating our position going forward, there was an advisory council for the parks recreation that has just been set up. I was appointed to that commission by virtue of procedure, parliamentary procedure. The senior legislator uh, that is noticed in those appointments is to call the first meeting. The first report is due out in November. It's soon to be October. I have sent an email upon immediate appointment to that committee, and I haven't heard a word back. Further, there's a representative from Hill, I believe, uh, New Hampshire, that has no, no skin in the game. There's a representative that chairs the committee that is from Merrimack that has no skin in the game. And there's a representative from Middleton, New Hampshire. And uh, I was a resident of Milton Mills, Jim, uh, for 10 years, that small little town. They had no skin in the game, no hearings. Uh, and I would say that uh, uh, whatever the efforts of past legislators were, uh, they didn't do anything. They got no money and they got no gain. And we went through this thing last year in terms of the operational conditions down there. The operational conditions in May, how bad it looked. But uh, again, anybody that thinks that you're going to advance our interest uh, in, in the legislature up there, the way the appointments of these, these committees have gone, the way that the track record has gone, and from representatives and legislators in this town, show me the money. But there's no way in heck that I'm walking away. Uh, nobody, nobody checked my name on a ballot to walk away from $700,000 because a bureaucrat writes a letter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I want to just, just, just a point. I just want to make a point that from my. From my 
practical point of view, if somebody were to make a motion to revisit that vote that was taken last week, that's legitimate, right? Yeah, the board can do that anytime they want. Okay, I just want to make that point. Go ahead, Rusty. Well, and I, I'm not saying I don't disagree with Mr. Bean on a lot of his points. However, we have one of our big points of that was we needed to hear from Dredd or, or whatever it's called now. We, we, said, sir. We, ha we have heard from them. As far as the other points go, those have nothing to do with dread, and that's that's my main concern. Is well, that we make one, sure it's, it's, it's not have, it's not he's it, the it's, it's not dread, the it's not dread anymore. Let's the address state. it by the the, the uh, okay, correct I'll name. It's not dread. dread. Let's get accurate. You had the floor. Let him keep the floor. You're, you're Thank big you. on accurate. Thank you. Natural okay, and cultural so it is the natural and cultural resources. Uh, the Department <laughs> of Natural and Cultural Resources. That we've heard from them. We got our answer from them. May not be the answer we like, but we got an answer from them. The rest of it, when it comes to rooms and meals tax and liquor tax and tolls and uh, property tax, that has nothing to do with New Hampshire Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. There is some concerns there, and I don't disagree with that. However, when the article came out in the paper, which we have no way of printing what some reporters like to fantasize with about us suing the state. There was never any mention here yesterday, last week, of suing. We wanted to find out and get more information. My only thing, my only answer was, we got the answer from the New Hampshire Department of Cultural Resources. We got that answer. It may not be the answer we like, but we did get the answer. As far as the rest of it goes, we can still go after that stuff, but I, I just taken what was written in the paper, which I didn't think was quite factual, and I, I took offense to it. I think we can still go after that stuff, but it's going to take our legislators to do that. We can give them as much information as we can, but you're going to have a hard fight going against road, to road tax, rooms and meals tax, and everything else. We've come a long way. It's still a long way to go, and I still think we need to go after that. Ma'am, Mr. Chairman, Ma real quickly. Ma 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 excuse me. Ma excuse me, Regina. All right. I'm not rescinding anything I did last week, okay? Good. I'm going to tell that right now. But $0.7 million is a lot of money, all right? And then when you add, and I agree, I agree with Rusty because we got an answer, whatever it was, two days, three days later. wasn't the answer we want, right? But we got it, and we got it in writing. So we use that. We use that. We use what I've been working on that I'm working on updating. And we continue with the legislators, not just the state legislators, but the D.C. legislators. Because look it, you got Hampton, you got, what, $200 million, let's say, we gave them last year? Well, what are we going to give them when we don't have a wastewater treatment plant, when we don't have wastewater pipes taking the crap from the beach, all right? When we don't have, um, what else do we need, Mr. Uh, Town Manager? I can't think of right now. We got a dozen things that we. All right. When we don't have water that we can drink, all right. When that becomes a problem, where we have water that is so bad it eventually could lead into the ocean, where people don't want to swim. All right. So all this is to me one big thing that we got to put in writing, and we got to use our state legislators. We got to use Mr. Bean. We got to use Mike Edgar. We got to use them all. We got to get them, and we got to get the U.S. senators to start listening to us, especially the ones that were governors here and have lived here. Hampton needs help. You have taken hundreds of millions of dollars from this town for as far back as I can see, and I'm looking to get some updated information. Hopefully, whatever this department is called is going to come up with a 16 financial soon, and put that together and here's our response from one department we haven't gotten a response from anyone else I haven't gotten a response from any of my representatives as a taxpayer never mind um, I sit on the board of selectmen of the town that gives you the money so I say we continue the fight whether or not we sue is a completely different story there's plenty of ways to go about this and let me let me just ask for clarification. I, 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 I understand Rick wants to speak and Ms. B wants to speak, and I'm, I'll go to you. Let me just ask for clarification. The vote last week was to was to authorize uh, town council to initiate a declaratory judgment action in the state courts in the state of New Hampshire 
to, de to obtain an adjudication of any and all aspects <coughs> that are in dispute right. as to responsibility. So it was to, to take a legal action. A legal action. Authorized, yes. Okay, I just want to clarify that. That was the vote, yeah. and it was a four to one vote. Let me yeah. Just clarify that. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, and myself, I don't care if it does take a lawsuit. I All I care about is that there is some answer to who is in charge of what, particularly when it comes to the road. As I've been sitting here tonight, I always review my papers, and I've been reading the results of the planning board draft minutes from September 6, 2017. And um, there's an, uh, there was someone that appeared from 571 Ocean Boulevard um, about, part of it has to do with a, a one foot by one foot retaining wall around a detached garage. Uh, and the people mentioned that the property, they've owned it since 1945. This particular barn that had that retaining wall has been there since 1878, which is about 10 years longer than what my property's been there. Uh, and their big problem is that the water drains off the road into their yard right, and fills up. This barn has been used for years. Now, all of a sudden, it fills up with water, yep. just like my front door. Water rolls in off the street, right underneath the road. This didn't happen 10 years ago. It happens now. It has nothing to do with global warming. It has to do with the fact that the street is elevated so much that the water doesn't go anywhere where it's supposed to. There's got to be people up and down, particularly in the beach part of the area. The, the, the water has to drain right into those stores that people get some cotton candy and yes. some candy apples yep. and all that other stuff. And uh, with all of what's going on today, with people talking about global warming, talking about the marshes and this and that, we need some responsibility from the state of what they're going to do with their road. This year, I just got my new tax, uh, uh, my new flood insurance bill uh, just this week. Make sure you pay that corn problem. Yeah. And it has gone from when I used to just pay $300. Last year it was 4100 This year it has just been raised to 5100 And next year it's going to be 6200 This is ridiculous. And I have never had water except for the one time in the storm of 78. The water is draining off the road. So we need to know who's going to take care of these sidewalks. Who's going to take care of those drains? That those drains in this uh, uh, the minutes of this meeting they're, they question DOT, in, there's a representative from DOT that was there, and they ask if the drain is working in front of this place. In this place, the drain supposedly is working. My guess is it probably doesn't, but they say it does. So they're in charge of these drains. They're in charge of this road. We just can't be told by the town that they can't, you know, I've listened to that for 20... By the state. Yeah, by both sides. Okay. We get n the people that are living there are getting nothing and not an answer. All we need is an answer. If they tell me an answer I don't want to hear, I'm okay with it. But I want to understand that that answer is the right one and that we're all getting what we're supposed to get. Okay. Mr. Bean. Yeah, I would say this, Mr. Chairman, is there's uh, three uh, constitutional <clears throat> cabinets of government in this state and in this country. There's the executive, which would be our, our governor. There's the legislative, which would be a body that I serve in, that both you and Rusty have served in. And oftentimes when laws are made, when governments at the executive and the legislative do things, uh, the citizenry, the, the sister corporations, if you will, the town of Hampton, this incorporation that you sit in front of, Mr. Chairman, uh, are aggrieved. And uh, the process is broken. And it's a bureaucrat, and he's a bureaucrat. And check out, and it's nothing personal. And I've called for his resignation, I think, operationally. And I think in terms of the response and how we're treated and what we hear, he's unqualified for the job, period. I've said that publicly. But now we get into the issue where this same bureaucrat writes a letter. Now he's the judge, and he's the executive like the gentleman from the EPA. And this is nothing personal. Jim was just in here. He has no answers. He doesn't have a timetable. They talk. The water's polluted. Bedford's losing $166,000. He didn't even know about it. He's the EPA. 
And you listen to these people. And people are dying. We served at Camp Lejeune. My family drank the water. My brother's family drank the water. Go to that website. Look at the Camp Lejeune water fiasco. Read those diseases. Sleep with one eye open. Incur that, that data theft that Department of Defense, you serve your country. Equifax happens last week and everyone's a victim. It happens to the Department of Defense. It's like rifle packing a hard time. These are government people. These are diseases. These are people that aren't held to the, to the, the standards that Mr. Welch is, that Mr. Gerald is, that Mr. Sullivan is, that our town department heads are, that our employees are. Real results, real results, real answers. They've come out on the pollution control exemption up there in Concord, Mr. Bridal. Cost this town millions and millions of dollars. I put in the legislation. It didn't make it out of committee. Democrats and Republicans wouldn't go against it. You raise this issue, I'll speak to it. Put in six or seven pieces of legislation. Didn't make it out of committee. I heard from one Democrat. says, I can't do that. Frank Pierce is in my district. I said, well, I'll tell him. Charge 60,000 bucks a year for a kid to go to school. You're not getting a pollution control exemption to obey the law. We know where we've ended up with the San Susi tort. This is game on. This is revenue. This is what leadership is about. Point seven million dollars. And Mr. Rose and his, his bureaucratic career is not empowered in the state constitution to say that Regina Barnes in her residency, Mr. Bridal, Mr. Waddell, Mr. Griffin, Mr. Bean have no recourse because two days after we authorized a tort action, he produces a four-page letter that I won't bother to read. And when they come against us, and we're in committee up there, Mr. Bridal, about the pollution control exemption, and go ask our people at the government affairs liaison that we have up there, uh, Jim and I have been up there, they don't even give you the courtesy call that they're going to oppose you. They send in a lawyer, and he reads, and next terror keeps the $2 million. Frank Pierce keeps the money. They don't talk to you. They don't care about you. You can say it's going to work, but they run it. Them and the lobbyists. And it doesn't happen. And go look at my legislation. None of it made it out of committee. Republicans and Democrats. Right wing, left wing. Right wing, left wing. Didn't make it out of committee. And then on the, the, the um, pollution control exemption, Mr. Welch, is, aside from the two million, what is that on education? Tens and tens of millions. That's given away to corporations. And I would say in, in summation that when we say that Meals and Rooms has nothing to do with revenue in our expenses, it has everything to do with our expenses because those people consume water and we have to produce the water and we had to spend time here tonight. We have to manage that as effluent to go into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay? That sewer system is going to have to be taken care of someday. The 9% goes to the state, we don't get any money back. Okay? That's a cost and there's depreciation. And our depreciation on the GASB 45, government account and standing boards, is 10% a year. We have a $2 million line item that until last year, when Christy Pullian put that in, no one was keeping track of. That's a 10% hit every year. Meals and Rooms is part of it. Every single state platform is part of it. When they take our, their trash to the, to the transfer station, it's part of it. It's all part of it. And I would, uh, I would hope there is no motion. There is a vote by the sovereign leadership in the town of Hampton last week to direct the town attorney to execute a tort action and use the United States government, the Constitution of New Hampshire, to bring relief to the people of Hampton. And it's far more than the point seven million. It's far more than that. And I would say we let sleeping dogs rise and you raise good points. And we don't want to argue with the state. We want to get along with the state. But we don't want to get along into the state where we're walking away from our duties as leaders to the tune on this specific instance of $0.7 million. And if it ever goes back and rolls back on that, I will tell you, I will not vote for one dime. I will look for a $700,000 cut. Because if we can walk away from $700,000 and not fight for it, then I would recommend we cut it from the budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Let me just add something just the vote was to begin legal action it was authorized to initiate a declaratory judgment action on all aspects in dispute so is that what's happening 
that's what that's what the board has indicated, and uh, I'm I'm uh, intend to do that. Okay, see, so that's your intention. Oh yes. Okay, very good, very good. I just want to go on record that I was the the negative vote last week against it. And I, I just want to say, Mr. Bean, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. But part of that big conversation was last week that we hadn't heard anything from, hold on, the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. And I'm just <laughs> yeah. saying, all unless, I'm saying, unless, all unless, I'm, yes, sir. All I'm saying is we have heard from them. This is not against just them. Now, I, I don't disagree with you. There's a lot of that stuff that we should have, and we should be getting it. But the way it was produced in the paper, it made it appear that we were going after them in particular. I, I, didn't, I didn't read the article, and I, and I know what goes on here. It's a tort issue, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's basic government 101. And unless uh, the director for cultural natural history, or whatever they're calling that department today, uh, had a $700,000 check attached to his letter, uh, there's a motion. This will take some research. It's been neglected since 1933. And I, I do not disagree with that. But it is all departments of this state. I agree with Mr. Mr. Griffin. DOT has to come up with some responsibility of yep. what we need to do with, with uh, the, the sewer and drain, or the drainage on, on there. They need to come up with that. We need to have some answers from them. We also need to hear from, we, we've had many times, the rooms and meals tax. That's a way to address it. But that has nothing to do with, not dread, but... Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. Uh, okay, well, alcohol, the tax on alcohol, the tax on the road tax, doesn't have anything to do with this. And that's uh, my my purpose okay, for bringing now, this up tonight. What I'm going to ask for is we took a vote last week. It was 4-1. There's a directive given. If somebody has a motion they want to bring up now, that's up to the individual to do that. If there's no motion taken up, I think we can move discuss on. this and move on. It's, That's fine. I would just like to say one more thing. These, uh, this, by the way, at 571 Ocean Boulevard, the, uh, the, all six elected people that are on, were at the planning board that night voted to support these people. And, uh, Is that Royal Sands? Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, the Spanos family property. It's like next to the... It's, it's in between where you used to live and Sands. Little Jacks in that right. area. One of the ones that has an old barn there. Um, but, you know, all they were trying to do was raise their existing driveway to prevent the stormwater runoff. So there are places over and over again that have this problem. And one of the things, uh, the, the study that we're doing at the Hampton Beach Area Commission um, is this particular area and a lot more has been left out of the plans that they're planning, have been left out of the 10-year plan. Um, and that's why on the, I believe it's the 16th, I, unless something is more pressing here, I plan to be at that 7 o'clock meeting because it's also a Monday night. And uh, that's something that the Hampton Area Commission pretty much always goes to. So I'm the representative there and I plan to go there and uh, talk at least for myself and be supportive of, of to whatever else the commission is doing okay. there. So I just want clarification. We, there was a 4-1 vote. There has been a, a directive to you, and you're following through on that directive. That's, um, that's the authorization. And I think, uh, as Slack and Griffin asked me last week, does this cover all areas like the one he's just mentioned? The answer is yes. These are things that have festered okay. for years and years. Yeah, that's what I covered. want to make sure because it's covering the areas. And is there some way mediation could be done here? I mean, is there such a thing as mediation between the town and the state? The vote was, I just want to make a clarification. If we're going to take votes and we're going to stick to votes, we want to know exactly what we're doing. The vote was to do, to take court action. True? Yes. And does that and I, with The vote was not to go to mediation. The vote, right, and, and, I, and I would say this, Mr. Chairman, and, and pardon me, Mr. Gerald, is that uh, when, when we have these votes, there's serious issues. This is a serious amount of money. It is unrequited response. It is negligent in terms of its delay. Uh, the pattern of abuse is perennial. I consider this a, a, a legal issue. Mark Gerald is the attorney. 
We can talk in general specifics, 700,000, the philosophy. He is the attorney, and more comment is now a legal issue. He will take time to research it. He has other important taskings. But he has been ordered as an employee through the town manager to execute this tort. And it's exciting, and it's nothing personal. And if I was a judge, I'd want to hear this, because it is interesting, and it's historical, and it's a business relationship, and it will be adjudicated. And, and it will be very, very exciting and very interesting to see what happens. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. And, and just the answer to Mr. Griffin's question is yes, as part of litigation that's commenced in the state court system, there is a mediation process that can yeah. be... Yeah. So we don't have to be hard-nosed. We can talk about it. Oh, yeah. Okay, as long as... I just so want to just clear what, we, what the motion was. Well, that's it. So that's the judge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, new business. Establish school zone 20 miles per hour, Winnicunit Road, easterly, from Academy Avenue to Mill Road. This is the result, Mr. Chairman, of a request, because we have a preschool located across the fire station. That would cover that area. We have a lot of traffic turning and going in and out. We have little, little children being taken across the street. Uh, and we've had several requests for school zone in that area to protect them during school day. And that's what this is all about. Do we have a? Uh, do we need a motion? Do we need a vote? Yes. Can I? Can I? A little discussion, Mr. Chairman. Yep. We're, we're, how does that work from Center School down towards Winnicott? Are there, are there gaps? I mean, it should be. No, considered. there's no gaps. Well, but we're no. adding to that existing area. Yeah, but, and I agree with Mr. Bean. We're stopping it at Mill Road, and then. 50 By the feet cemetery, up the road, right? We're putting in another one for the high school. Why don't we just make it all from? Where it starts up here. It's a landing road. The other high school. We can do that. It's a landing road. Yeah. If we can yeah. make that motion, Mr. Sure. I'll make that motion. That we it, how would it, how did they have it here? To establish a school zone 20 miles an hour from Winnicott Road easterly from Academy Ave, which actually, actually no. should say east uh, westerly of Center School to Landing Road. Landing Road. Second. All in favor? So is that whole problem? Okay, now, before we go to closing comments, we're still in public? We are still in public. Uh, the board could make a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small a and small c uh, personnel and reputation. Uh, so moved. Uh, uh, roll call. Aye. 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 And uh, who second that? Uh, seconded I by second. Virginia. Thank you, Channel 22.